What's up my friends, I'm Harv, I'm a videographer and on this channel I make videos about videography and audio amongst other things. In this video I'm answering the question, what is false colour? Also, how did it become a thing? And how can you use it to your advantage to improve your video footage? As ever, I've timestamped everything below so you can just skip to the bit you like. Before we get into it, this channel now has a non-profit Patreon where any funds from Patreon go back into the channel, I buy gear, do an unbiased review, and then I give the gear away to my backers. If that's of interest, if this channel helps you, do consider backing, check it out, it's linked below, it's just the cost of a cup of coffee. When I first heard the term false colour, which admittedly is a long time ago now, I thought it was something to do with, you know, getting the colours right in your footage, like if there was something a little bit wrong with, say, your skin tones, maybe they're a bit too magenta or green. Of course now we know false colour has nothing to do with that side of things. So where did false colour come from? The origin of false colour comes from when astronomers wanted to add context to black and white images of things like, you know, asteroids. Apparently the human eye can only differentiate between something like 16 different shades of grey and that doesn't give a lot of kind of latitude. So to us the images looked kind of flat and really kind of it was hard to distinguish detail. However, by assigning millions of colours to the luma values in the photos, it was far easier to see textures and contours that would otherwise be hidden in the grayscale. Of course, it was only a matter of time until this tech filtered down into the filmmaking world. So what is it in a filmmaking context? So the one-liner answer to that is, it's a non-destructive overlay of colours across your frame to help communicate luma levels. And it's something that you would turn on and off to, you know, whenever you needed to kind of make any exposure tweaks. So when you turn on false colour in your external monitor, it looks like this. And if you've never used it before, yeah, it looks like a complete mess of colours. You'll notice there's usually a scale along the bottom of the screen. And then when you adjust your exposure, all of the colours kind of shift. And these obviously correspond to that scale on the bottom of the screen. But I'll get into that in just a second. I don't think you'd want it left on all the time because of course you wouldn't be able to see what you're doing and actually be able to film something good. Good. That is, unless you have more than one monitor, in which case, yeah, go for it. There are different versions of false colour. Of course, companies like Sony have theirs, but I'd say the best known, you know, the most popular, I would say, is the ARRI model, and that looks like this. They're all really similar, to be honest, but let me show you how to use them first on skin tones. So I'm using this clip, which is the intro from this video. As you can see, I've added a false color chart along the bottom of the screen. So let's expose some skin tones. And what if I'd overexpose this shot? Well, to demonstrate how this would look on a false color display, I've added a false color lookup table in post. It's totally free, you can get it too. It's from IWLTBAP, that's totally free. And as you can see, my skin tones are well into that kind of yellow bordering on red. It would be really obvious that I'm completely overexposed. And then if we go the other way, if you know I really underexpose this shot, false color would show the shot looking a bit like this. Just a ton of blues and purples and almost everything is in the shadows so I'd be losing so much information and it's it's a ruined shot basically. So what about perfectly exposing skin tones? Well it's going to vary depending on your skin tone but for me this is what I'm looking for. On the key side of my face on camera right you can see lots of pink which is one stop above middle grey and then on the fill side of my face you can see more green and grey and that's a good thing. Green is middle grey and grey is just half a stop above middle grey. That tells me that nothing is going to be blown out and I'm going to get some nice contrast on each side of my face. And then I dug out this shot which is uh, one of the most dynamic that I could find. We've got lots of shadow areas with the bridge and the grass and then potentially quite a lot of highlight areas with the sky. And this is the kind of shot where you have exposure decisions to make. Do you expose for the foreground with the bridge and the shadow areas or do you expose to protect the highlights in the sky? Or do you kind of just aim somewhere in the middle, which is actually what I did here? Anyway, turning on our false colour and you can see in the sky, we're definitely getting a kind of early warning with that yellow quickly turning into red. Don't worry though, I haven't actually clipped any highlights here. I'm shooting in log, so. And the same goes for the shadow areas. Again, they haven't gone too dark, so I should be able to recover some information if I need to. Anyway, now it's time to take everything in this video, grind it up, 
and make a nice espresso of tips to take away. False colour originated from astronomy and eventually filtered down into filmmaking. False colour is an overlay of colours across your frame to communicate luma levels. There are many benefits to using false colour. Firstly, it's simple and easy to use arguably easier than zebras and waveforms. You can expose things like skin tones really fast, so it can be a real time saver. False color gives you exposure levels you can bank on. You can't be fooled by the way an image looks on your monitor. However, there are some drawbacks to using false color. You can't see what else is going on in your image whilst using false color, like the color side of things or pulling focus. False colour also doesn't account for creative exposure decisions, so really be mindful of that kind of thing. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this video helpful and interesting. My question of the day is this, how do you use false colour? And also, how do you rate it compared to the other exposure tools? I will see you in the comments section. I've now filmed hundreds of videos about videography and audio on this channel, of which YouTube has recommended this video for you, and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.